I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? This is another request for Isaiah, a PayPal request. Thank you so much for that. If anyone's ever interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, review, movie topic, whatever, you just send the request directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Sorry, I'll try not to cough every 30 seconds as some person got pissed at before. I can't stay in your videos. You cough every 30 seconds. Sorry, I didn't know it was against the law to cough. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, this is once again for Isaiah. <coughs> Okay, that's enough. Seriously, Lupus on, he to be a talented director. He directed this film. I love The Fifth Element. Love The Fifth Element. That was the last sci-fi film I remember him doing. Maybe that was the only sci-fi film he had done before this. And so, okay, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. I'll say this, a positive which made me not hate the film, it's a visual spectacle. It's a beautiful looking film. I thought the effects worked very well. I liked the imagination involved. The way it begins, where it talks about this station, almost like a glorified Deep Space Nine station. And it's montage during the credits where, while the station is being built, we have the different races of humans coming on board. Then they show all the different races of aliens come on board and then whoever owns the station is shaking hands so it was cool to see like what other different type of alien creature diplomats were going to arrive next i thought that was a really interesting way to do a montage for your opening so it helps create this big world this universe it has And then sometime later, and you have these humanoid type aliens. How do I? I'm not sure how to describe them. The little bit albino and the, the human, but not quite. They have a definite alien world. They use pearls a lot. They use these small animals to reproduce these pearls, which is their energy source. It shows they've been attacked, and then you realize it's this message that has been sent to our lead, played by Dane DeHaan. Now again, this has a lot of really cool visual stuff in it, I thought. For example, they go into this market, which the... On one hand, it's a complete barren desert, 
but if you put on sort of a VR set in the same spot, there's another world of markets and aliens and people. So it was it, it's almost as if two spaces are in the same space in a funny, in a strange way. I thought that was a really interesting idea, the way that was done. You have this alien criminal voiced by John Goodman, who I thought would come back later, but he doesn't. But I liked the design of that creature. When they get back to the station, there's these three aliens that look like duck-billed duck platypuses. I don't know what the hell they're supposed to be. They're these three creatures that like to try to finish each other's sentences and always looking for a deal because they have a lot of info and okay how much you don't pay me later on someone uses a jellyfish called the cortex of jellyfish where they put it on their head as if it's fucking metroid and then this girl is able to see certain memories and find certain people that she's looking for you have this creature that's a shapeshifter and its original form is this blob tentacle creature which i thought was an interesting effect of course when i think of shapeshifter it makes me think of the girl in star trek 6 but imagine if her original form was this i did blob tentacle cgi but it worked for what it was supposed to be So why do I not love the film? I think it's two leads are very miscast. Dane DeHaan, he was the guy who played Green Goblin in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. He's been in other stuff. The girl, I forget her name, they were bad. They were horribly miscast. Why did they even need to be younger folks? There's so many other better established actors that could have because that's the difference between this and the fifth element the fifth element has beautiful visuals as well beautiful visuals that i think for the most part hold up fairly well in today's standard and that was 1997 when that came out but what makes the fifth element endearing at least to me is yes it's a good looking film it has fantastic special effects has a couple of fun action sequences but you know what? It has really colorful, interesting, fun characters and a solid cast. You had Bruce Willis in his prime. You had people like Ian Holm and even Tiny Lister Jr. and Chris Tucker when he was making it big. You had Brian James, a great character actor. You had Gary Oldman having fun as this car salesman in space type of guy. But he deals with guns. Even had uh, Luke Perry at the beginning of the film. I mean, you had a bunch of people that helped Terry and like Bruce Willis. Granted, he's a block of wood nowadays, but back then he would. He would do. Sorry, stupid fucking fly. Fucking kill it if I could. Little fucker. I was saying that Bruce Willis. He was fun. He had, even in the fifth element, yeah, he was doing, doing the cool Bruce Willis tone. But he had energy. Yeah, it's a multi pass. And he had a sense of humor and he, he fit very well into the role that he was given in that as his cab driver put into this extraordinary set of circumstances Ian Holm was having fun with his role as this priest and little shenanigans Chris Tucker yeah he got a bit aggravated from time to time but he definitely had some energy to spare and then some and a lot of screeching but here Dane DeHaan and the girl are so low T and their dialogue delivery like Dane DeHaan his delivery of dialogue is so he's so quiet 
And he's like a lower end Keanu Reeves at times in this. Like a more lower, more bored Keanu Reeves. That's what it seems like from time to time. And even the girl, there's so many times where she's very low T and low T delivery of dialogue. I'm thinking, wake up. Be energized. Be intense. Be invigorated. Something, man. What is going on? I don't know if Luke Besson, he saw these performances. He thought this was a good job. They hurt the film a lot. Now, do I hate the film? No, I do think it's a time waster for the visual spectacle. And some interesting pieces. Just you know, the costume design, the look and design of the creatures. and It's trying to do it. It's not original, but it's still not trying to be a remake of a remake of a remake of a remake. Sequel of sequel of sequel, reboot of reboot, 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 that type of thing, at least. I have a feeling Luc Besson probably wanted this to become a franchise, but that wasn't the case. I don't know why he thought to have both of the lead characters be so dry and wooden. Again, you compare that to the life of the characters and the fifth element. That's a sharp contrast between the two. I don't know why Lupuson didn't realize that. Like, come on, give these characters, give these people air, give them fucking life. Or bring, bring actors in that can really bring life to it. Doesn't have to be younger folks, could be older folks too. Is that against the law to have that? I don't know where this law is where it can only be younger actors, younger characters. Yeah, and I don't know where that law went. And you have chase scenes throughout the station and you have this group of native aliens that get the girl and then Dane DeHaan and the shapeshifter have to work together and he's fighting all these native aliens and stabbing them and seems like a fun scene except it does hurt that I don't care a tremendous amount about the characters. Rihanna, honestly she wasn't that bad as the shapeshifter. I mean Rihanna is not a great actress but I don't think she was that bad in this role. Clive Owen is in there. He's in it a little bit at the beginning. He disappears for a good chunk and he comes in the third act. He's going to be our bad guy. Who was, who else did I see? Ethan Hawke. As a guy who owns his club and he's not in the film too much. Again, it's one of those things that, as a visual medium, I thought the costumes, the look, the effects, some of the creative choices of design of the creatures, and some of the stuff that happens. Again, during that whole VR, I'm on the desert sand, a weapon that, I guess, a non-lethal weapon, well, it'll shoot all these metal balls to hit a piece of metal so that you are drag down you can't move anywhere I don't know how often that type of weapon would be practical on the flip side it was interesting I had not seen anything quite like that and your main character does get to do some stuff he's not just a fly in the wall doing nothing you know, both characters get to throughout the film get to be important to the story Clive Owen, he's kind of in there, one ear in, out the other ear as a villain, and you don't even find out he's the villain. Well, I guess he was the villain very early on, but technically they don't say he's the villain until the third act. 
I, you know, I'm sure you've seen plenty of other films that deal with a certain subject matter where, oh, there was a race that was peaceful and military went in because they wanted it and all oh, that wasn't right. So some humans, whether it be like an Avatar, a variety of other movies. So yeah, it's not the most original film. The two leads being so wooden and dry really hurt the film quite a bit. But on the flip side, I was never bored. I was me mesmerized by the visual aesthetic of the film, the effects. I did in some of the creative juices on certain sequences and ideas and looks of creatures and costumes, all that stuff. And again, I don't think it's an awful bad movie. I just think it's a movie that could have been better in particular if you have two much stronger actors because I didn't mean maybe it's the writing but I really do think it's the acting now maybe they were told to act this way but the director or not I don't care these two performances were lackluster just way too wooden dry and they're quiet okay like compare that to if you had a Han Solo from Star Wars, that type of energy and bravado, or you had even someone as quirky as how the Fifth Element had a lot of quirky characters. I still remember in the Fifth Element where the guy tries to rob him, and he's got the thing that looks like the outside, and it's on his hat, and Bruce Willis has a gun, he's like. That's a really nice hat. I was like, you liked it? And it was Bruce Willis cracking a smile and having fun with his character and not being the Bruce Willis of today, wooden and dull. So yeah, it's just like, come on, Lupus, on you. You knew how to do is the fifth element. Visual wise, good, but acting. Perhaps writing-wise, leaves something to be desired. So overall, I, it's just an okay time waster. But I can't give any more than that. So thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.